Cellflow is a new kind of particle simulation algorithm, one that shows emergent behaviors that actually look like life. Sometimes it mimics single-cell organisms, sometimes full ecosystems like coral reefs, and occasionally it even resembles planets or galaxies. It all depends on how you tweak the parameters. built on two key inspirations. Clusters by Jeffrey Ventrella, and Particle Life by Tom Moore. So here's how it works. We've got different types of particles. Each type has its own set of attraction and repulsion rules, how much it likes or avoids other types, and even its own kind. For instance, red particles might be slightly drawn to other reds, but they hate yellows and are super into blues. And these relationships aren't always mutual. Just because red likes blue doesn't mean blue likes red. But from these simple rules, you get these insanely complex webs of interaction. It all comes alive, these rich, moving patterns that behave in ways eerily similar to real organisms. When I first discovered clusters and particle life, I was completely fascinated. I dove in, read every line of code I could find, and started to wonder, could this be even better? I decided to build my own version of particle life from scratch. That's when I spotted something interesting. The original force function had a harsh transition between the repulsion and attraction zones. Check this out. What's going on here is if the distance r is less than beta, you get strong repulsion. If it's more than beta, but the change between the two is abrupt, it causes positive particles to jump and the whole thing starts to feel less organic. It's just off. But in nature, forces don't behave like they're continuous, smooth. So I started looking into how real particle physics handles this. Things like the Leonard Jones and Morse potentials. They're designed to model how atoms and molecules attract and repel each other smoothly over distance. But, those didn't quite work in this context. They were too rigid, too perfectly tuned for atomic interactions. So I experimented, a lot. Talked with some AIs, Grok, Gemini, even ChatGPT now and then, and eventually landed on a force function that just clicked. This version has three parameters, attraction, repulsion, and K. Repulsion dominates up close, fading smoothly as distance increases. Attraction grows linearly. The result? A net force that's continuous and stable. No sudden jumps. And that means the motion of the particles becomes much more fluid, much more alive. Then came the fun part, implementing it. I wrote the algorithm in C-sharp, Unity, C++, and JavaScript. But none of them really came to life until I started using the GPU. That was a whole new challenge. Writing compute shaders is a different universe. It's not just code, it's parallel code. On the GPU, I had to relearn how to think. And yeah, I yelled, I slammed my desk, but with help from Grok, Gemini, and of course, ChatGPT, I finally cracked it and it paid off. We went from 700 particles in vanilla JavaScript to 4,000 to 8,000 on the laptop GPU. On a decent GPU, we're probably talking 50K to 100K particles. But even around 4,000, the simulation starts to shine. At the heart of it all is a force matrix. This defines how each type of particle feels about the others, who it's drawn to, who it avoids. To fully explore what this matrix can do, I developed a new algorithm that populates it using Gaussian distributions you can bias and offset. 
This lets you fine tune and morph the emerging shapes of the resulting creatures. It also helps generate more uniform or differentiated genetic genetic forms. If you push things to the extremes, the system can become unstable. So usually, you want to stay near a sweet spot and a balance between too much sameness and too much chaos. And it's in that equilibrium zone where the most interesting, lifelike, and complex results emerge. Just like with fractals, the magic happens at the boundary, the edge between order and disorder. I also added another algorithm that lets you vary the interaction radius for each particle type with a slider called ratio. Ratio effectively morphs the system from more fluid, liquid-like forms in the center of the range to more solid, static, even ossified patterns at the extremes. That single tweak unlocked a whole new layer of behavior, more like coral reefs or intricate multicellular organisms. The emergent patterns became even richer. Another key addition was neighborhood-based physics. I calculate how many nearby particles each one has and apply acceleration or friction, depending on that density. You control this with a slider called balance. It normally goes from zero to one, but I extended it to 1.5, and that's where things get weird. When balance goes past one, some forces flip sign. They go negative. It's almost like reversing time. Most particles continue forward, but some behave as if they're moving backwards. The result is all kinds of bizarre behaviors, implosions, structures like black holes, and strange blooms that feel like they're unfolding in reverse. It's broken, and I left it that way on purpose to explore these alien behaviors. That they are not exactly realistic, but it reminds other possible realms where time behaves like if it were two separate additional dimensions or just were unstable and glitchy. Finally, I'm releasing the web simulator for you to play with and explore. You can load and save the systems you generate on your computer, and you can test OAT presets I've prepared by simply pressing the keys 1 through OH. Press the spacebar to generate a new force matrix. I'm also releasing it as open source so people can learn from it, tweak it, and modify it. If you make a cool addition to the code, I'd love to check it out. Now, editing a video like this takes a lot of time. Honestly, I just want to get back into the simulator, tweaking, expanding, refining. But if this video gets some attention, I'll make a second part where I break down the rest of the algorithms or present other unpublished generative works I've been developing. So please like and subscribe to help me keep creating this kind of content. Thanks for watching and sorry for using a digital voice. My native European accent is way less understandable. See you.